Hello, this is Jamie White of Global Diversity News. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Felipe Barganier at Gap International LLC. Now, Gap International LLC handles HR and retirement insurance. Today, we'll discuss how Felipe feels about the current insurance market, how Obamacare affects this, and where he sees insurance moving into the future for large, medium, and small scale businesses. As always, please like and subscribe to the podcast. And if you're interested, check out Gap International's website at gapint.com and follow them on Facebook at facebook.com slash gapintllc. Hello and welcome. Uh, this is Jamie White with Global Diversity News, uh, bringing you another podcast interview. Today, I have with me Felipe uh, with Gap International uh, LLC. Now, Gap International LLC is located in Atlanta, uh, but has clients all over America. And their main service, uh, if you will, is insurance. Uh, now, Felipe, welcome. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. No problem. Thank you, Jamie, for um, inviting us on. Uh, as, as, as you alluded to, we are based out of um, Atlanta, Georgia, but we have clients all over the country um, and also representatives in offices in, uh, in, in certain pockets of the country, Chicago, uh, uh, Pennsylvania, Houston, and a couple of other areas. So uh, definitely glad to be um, on your podcast and looking forward to speaking to you on today. Yep, I appreciate that. Now, before we get into uh, your company um, and talking about Gap International LLC and what you guys offer, how do you pronounce your, your last name one more time? This is... <laughs> <laughs> it's the most common name in America, man. Uh, Barganier. Barganier. Uh, it's, 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 yes, it's a French Creole. French Creole. Like Louisiana French Creole? Yes, it well, my father's actually from Barbados, uh, so gotcha. the full name is Felipe Autrandet Tubes Barganier. Oh, wow. That is a mouthful. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's cool. That's yeah. I always like. I always love a uh, unique name. Unique names. So. Yes. So yeah, but again, welcome to the podcast. Uh, so you know, let's go ahead and let's get uh, into uh, your your company. So tell me a little bit about Gap International LLC. Uh, what are you? Some, what are some of your uh, services that you're offering today? Um, and kind of give me a brief history of, of how you got started. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, um, our, our company is called uh, Gab International um, LLC. Um, we've been been in business since 2001, uh, but officially in LLC since 2011. Um, and we have clients ranging from uh, large government clients, uh, one of them in the Department of Corrections, 13,000 uh, 13, employees, uh, whereas we have other clients that only have two employees. Uh, but our primary service is that we're full service insurance risk management retirement and a consulting firm so we can do anything for a client um we can do payroll we can do uh employee benefits retirement plans um hr consulting uh you name it in that hr uh insurance realm or, or retirement realm we can handle it for our clients um even even workers comp so uh, we tell our clients anytime you think of think of insurance, you think of retirement, you think of anything that has to do with um, insuring somebody or making sure somebody can uh, meet retirement or HR, call us. Um, and and it, it really started out as me being a financial advisor uh, back in 2001 and seeing that there was a need in the marketplace, you know, for a firm that um, for a minority firm you know, for, or or firms in general that had uh, the capability and the scale to be able to service clients large and small. So um, initially, I was just doing uh, financial planning for clients. Uh, mm -hmm. Then I moved into the group benefit space uh, where I was doing supplemental insurance. And then my clients started asking me, what else could you do? And of course, when they start asking you that, you must be doing something right. <laughs> um, you know, so, <laughs> you know, so what happened then was that, you know, I just started adding lines to our portfolio to where here we are in 2016. Um, and we're now, we're now pretty much able to offer a solution for our clients. So that, that way they're not having to go to uh, multiple vendors for 
uh, multiple solutions and everything since it's all in house. It's, it's all one cohesive unit, so you're not overpaying for this with a company A, and and because we know everything that's going on, we're able to he help our clients contain costs, which is very important for small, medium, or even large size businesses. Oh yeah, absolutely. Maintaining costs is key, or not maintaining, but decreasing. Yes, <laughs> it's key. Um, yes. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, HR and retirement insurance. Um, that's pretty. That's pretty uh, well rounded, especially in today's uh, day and age. And trust me, we're going to get into uh, Obamacare and kind of where you see the industry uh, going um, in that realm. But before we do, uh, tell me a little bit more about uh, some of the key services or specific services that you offer. Uh, you can also, if if you guys do it in this manner, break it down by hey, you know, small business we offer this, or not small, yeah, small business we offer this, medium sized businesses we offer this, and maybe large scale corporations. Uh, we can offer this. Okay. Okay. Um, for sure. One of the things that uh, we try to do is exactly what you just said. We try to compartmentalize um, our offerings based on the size of the employer because we realize that a small mom and pop operation has different needs than a major corporation or a large government entity. So for our uh, clients that I would say any client that's less than 50 lives, uh, typically you don't have an HR department. Um, the owner may be running the payroll and doing everything. So what we so what we do in that case is we actually come in and become an extension of the company where we can be your outsourced payroll department, employee benefits, um, and possibly even a HR. You know, um, you know, to a, to a, to a certain extent. But what we want to do is to make is that when we come in, we come in to simplify our our clients' lives. So. For employees in that in, in that space, we we are experts in identifying uh, what your unique challenges are, and one of the misnomers that a lot of small businesses have is that they have to contribute to their employees' benefits, which is not factual as long as it's not major medical. And of course, with I know we're going to talk about this later, but with Obamacare ACA, you're not having if you have under 50 employees, you're not obligated to offer them benefits. So what we do is we can actually come in and do the ACA enrollment with the employees, uh, but then you as an employer can still offer disability insurance, accident insurance, life insurance, things that will increase employee morale and retention because now you're taking yourself from being just a company that pays people to a company that also protects their employees, which is very important. A lot of employees will leave a small business and go to a larger company or a company that's offering benefits for an extra, you know, two or three dollars. When if you're offering benefits that's tied to your company, they're more likely to uh, stay with you um, longer because now you're also showing them, um, you know, that you care about their families. Yeah, also, commitment. yes. And it also helps you uh, mitigate risk because, of course, if you you are obligated to have workers' comp if you have three or more employees. So if your employees don't have um, any type of insurance that's protecting them when they're at home, guess when most uh, workers' comp claims are filed? <laughs> what do you mean when? That would be, yeah, Mondays. Oh. Because <laughs> the employee will get hurt. <laughs> They'll get hurt on the weekend. Um, and I'm saying, you know, that the, the people that are listening have employees that will do this. I was actually going to say New Year's. But <laughs> no, 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 no. Actually, it's, it's Mondays, and that's because an employee will get hurt on the weekends. And, of course, the weekend is when they're going to have the most time. They're going to have two, tw two full 24-hour days where they're able to go run around with kids, work, do, uh, do housework, you know, um, there's a greater chance of them being injured um, on the weekends because they're not working. But if they don't have a disability plan or something that's going to protect them while they're at home, well, they're going to come to work and all of a sudden you're going to hear somebody <laughs> slip and fail um, five minutes after clocking in, and you don't want that. So that's that's part of us helping our clients mitigate risk because that's going to drive your workers' comp premiums up. You know, it's, there's just a lot of things that 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 uh, that that um. You know that that encompasses so, uh, so for so for that specific demographic, we're trying to make sure that we're protecting our clients because also I was talking to a client earlier, when you're um, 
when you're a small employer and you're not offering benefits, you typically are very intimate with your employees, meaning that you have a close relationship. So if they get sick, get hurt, or die, the first person that their family is going to come to is you. Right. And go, well, can you pay help us pay for a funeral or can you keep paying him? And most small oh, wow. businesses aren't don't right and then we don't think about this. So if you have a, a client uh, an um employee that you know, that does, you know, fall on hard times and gets ill or something like that, you as a small business person is gonna you're gonna have to make a decision, okay, do I go, well, you know, uh, I, I'm going to pay him, but then you got to hire somebody to replace him. So now you're paying somebody who's not working, also paying somebody that you just hired. So you have to, you got to train that person, you know, um, when you could have just offered a disability plan or, or a, a specific policy that paid them for being out or for death or something like that, where you're not having to be concerned about that. So all of that is a part of mitigating a risk for, for our clients, for, for larger employers, you know, we we actually come in and can do HR consulting. Um, you know, do you know risk risk assessments, uh, dependent verifications, which is real big with your larger employers uh, because on a lot of times, especially with your government contracts or your 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 government uh, workers, there aren't any um, anything. Nobody's checking to see if this dependent is legitimate, if this spouse is legitimate. They're yeah. just asking you, okay, come on. Well, so so for instance, um, you've had jobs, and when you go when you fill out the application, uh, of course you don't have any kids or anything, so it's a little bit different with you. But with a guy like myself, um, <laughs> you know, if you when whenever an employer uh, signs their employees up, up for uh, for benefits, typically it's either done online or it's done uh, manually. So, but there's no system of checks and balances where you have people that 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 are put, you know, grandkids, uh, uh, friends, children, yeah, friends, yeah, children, absolutely. boyfriend, girlfriends, children, How many people are or on even you? How many, you're dependent, right, right. Yeah. right. So it might be twenty dependents on there, you know, <laughs> and then a and then a, a fiance or, or or a boyfriend or girlfriend that's covered up under the plan that they're they're not, they're not even married, you know, so. We come in and do audits and a verification for those types of uh, services as well, you know, which kind of helps, you know, uh, and of course, all of that drives up costs, insurance costs for the company because now it's being overly utilized. So we do that and then we also use, use a teledoc service which where, where the employees can, can, uh, can, instead of going to emergency room, uh, to, to emergency rooms or to um, urgent care facilities, they're now calling into um, a 1 800 number or doing a, uh, a Skype session with the licensed physician, and now they're being treated telephonically as opposed to going into a doctor. So, and that's lowering the, the and that's lowering the cost for the employee and for the employer. Because right now, a lot of employees, especially on the weekend when your doctor is closed. If you get sick, where are you going to go? To the emergency room or to the urgent care, which is not what you should be doing mm-hmm. for the flu. But if you get, yeah, but if it's you know, yeah. So we're there. There are a lot of things that 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 can be done and that we're doing that just helps to mitigate those risks and those unnecessary costs. Um, and a lot of it has to do with employee education. So we educate the employees uh, on their benefits, either in person or depending on the size of the employer, utilizing technology uh, with one of our partners, um, you know, and that's, you know, worked out fairly well for us. Interesting. That's that's a lot of interesting facts. Uh, one more question, and then we're going to get into Obamacare, because um, that's always, as we both know, it's going to be a very interesting topic. But uh, just for you, just for Gap International LLC, what industries are you guys most specifically in right now? And does it even matter when it comes to insurance? Which well, obviously it does. Um, manufacturing probably higher premiums. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, we turned out no clients just because every company needs um, employee benefits um, and insurance, workers' comp, general liability. You know, all of those. Uh, we actually do bonding also. So we don't. Our clients are pretty diverse. We do have a. Uh, we have more government clients than anything, uh, just because. 
um, of the sure scale and how I got started in the industry. But, okay. uh, you know, yeah, but we're, you know, we have doctor's offices and all kinds of, you know, uh, a wide variety of clients. Okay. So you're able to make, essentially, you've had, you've gotten, you have experience with all types of industries and all types of, uh, size of companies. Okay. That's fair. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and let's get into the, uh, affordable healthcare act, right? Uh, AKA Obamacare. Uh, so for starters, um, cause I know a lot of people don't know, I guess the intricacies of Obamacare, but if you can just give a brief description of Obamacare as it pertains to businesses, just as quick as you can. I know I'm asking a lot from you here, <laughs> uh, just from that, but kind of what it entails and then we'll kind of go from there. Just okay. Well, one of the things, um, as I alluded to earlier, was that if you have under 50 employees, you don't need, uh, the, uh, there's no mandate for you to offer insurance, but for those over 50 employees, uh, that's what we've been seeing the, the biggest need for education, uh, because there's reporting that has to go, uh, um, go into place. And if you don't offer employees, um, your employees benefits, um, and you have over, over, over 50, um, you face a penalty as well. So what we do is we try to come in and, um, and make sure cause that's, that's another risk, you know, is that we help you mitigate that risk as well, because one of the issues that a lot of companies don't realize is that, okay, let's just say you are a fast food and this is the perfect example. You are a fast food. A uh, franchise or you're a restaurant right. with high turnover and your typical employee count, maybe 30 employees. But at the end of the year, you send out a hundred W2s because of turnover. Oh, okay. If, yeah. So if you didn't, if you don't have that documented, right, the IRS is going to think you had a hundred employees at one time, mm. which means that now you should be offering insurance. So that's one of the issues that a lot of small businesses are running into. So we also have partnerships uh, with firms that will help you uh, do, do your ACA reporting because there's uh, reports that you have to submit to the IRS, um, you know, to make sure that you're compliant um, once you get over that threshold of 50 employees. So uh, that's one of the things that then again, you talk about added, you know, added workload to a small business owner or even to an HR department, because right. even when you, because typically if a client has a hundred, you know, even some, I've seen some that have much as 500 employees, or if it's government, they might have a couple of thousand employees. There might be one person, two, one or two people in HR. So that's a lot of reporting. That's a lot of responsibility that, that, that you're putting on one person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we come in and, um, you know, and help them, you know, um, you know, navigate yeah. that ACA minefield. <laughs> right. Minefield. That's another word. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that, uh, so tell us what's in, in, in asking that um, when we're talking about Obamacare, what do you, uh, I've been, I've read actually a couple of articles about uh, how Obamacare is taking a little bit of a hit right now, uh, just because you have certain uh, companies such as uh, Aetna and uh, I think it's United Health that have just pulled out mm -hmm. in a lot of states. Yep. I think Aetna pulled out in about 11 states. Um, so just tell tell us about uh, why do you think that's happening um, as Obamacare is constructed, constructed right now? And what does that mean just a year from now? Well, for small business really, or business. what's Right. What's what I believe is happening, um, and I'm, you know, and hopefully Aetna won't be listening to this call. But um, I know a lot of that is because you know the government didn't want to merger. You know, uh, they were trying to merge. You know, and we don't. We know what happens when you only have one or two players in any industry. Yeah. Uh, exactly. You know, lack yes, lack of competition creates price gouging and everything else. So, mm -hmm. uh, what? what we're what i believe a lot of that and a lot of that also had to do with the fact that and we knew this coming into obamacare but i think they're realizing it more is that the people that are a lot of the people that are being insured i mean and it might not, not even be a high number but um are people that couldn't get insurance before which was the whole purpose of of, of aca was for us to be able to that's a good point so right for for 
everybody to have access to insurance regardless of your medical condition. So if you have, you know, a terminal illness, you know, or a, a disease that requires maintenance at where you may have gone to the local county hospital, now all of a sudden you have insurance, which is why the premiums have been increasing every year. Uh, and they're supposed to level off and then decrease, uh, you know, or, or at least stabilize, you know, over the coming years. But I don't know that that's the reality just because you also got to realize that, yeah, I mean, that's just a lot of people that may have cancer, you know, AIDS, you know, diabetes. I mean, it's just a plethora yeah, I mean, of, you know, things that people, you know, Companies were able to pick and choose who they could cover before. Now mm -hmm. they can't do that. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. Um, I know. Just to add to that, another um, part that piece that I've been seeing is that a lot of what was supposed to, I guess, manage those high costs uh, were a lot of healthy people, healthy younger people were supposed to uh, buy into the uh, to the to Obamacare yeah. and whatnot, and they're just not um, the way uh, to the degree that that the government thought. So that's also uh, increasing prices. Yeah. Right, and what you got to think about with that is the fact that they don't um, – that those people, uh, the younger demographic, really don't um, don't think about, you know, their health. You, we all have been there. You, you think that – and you're still there, Jamie. Um, <laughs> you know, we uh, – you know, think that, you know, you're invincible and that you don't need it, yada, yada, yada. And then also it's problematic because of the subsidy situation. So you ask a young person to come by insurance and they, you know, might not qualify for a subsidy because their income is too high, mm -hmm. but they also have other obligations. So, you know, that's where the issue is. And I, I yeah. also think that there hasn't been enough education either because a lot of times people don't understand the tax consequences. Yeah, no, no, no I, I completely agree with you. Young people to healthcare reminds me of when you're in college and people offer you a credit card or a loan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you just don't yeah. understand exactly how to use it and how it benefits you. Right. So because of that, you come out. Yep. Um, I think another I think another issue that I've seen just from people my own age is when, when you talked about other responsibilities, one of the big responsibilities are things like loans. Uh, when people are considering loans right. versus healthcare, if you don't think you're going to get sick, you know, this year, but you know, you got to pay off those, you know, you know, 30, 40, 50, hundred thousand dollar loans. Um, I mean, you know, priorities, where, where, where do you put your priority? Um, and what, which one's more important? And, and the fact that people have to even make those decisions is, is kind of tough. And that's, it's driving another piece though, as to why healthcare may not be getting the amount of people it needs for, uh, prices to drop. So, all right. Yeah, but but yes, uh, back back to uh, the the business piece um, and, and more towards Obamacare. With, with this being an election year, and now you know President Obama, you know, effectively retiring, you know, quote unquote, if you will. <laughs> um, and uh, for whoever, I don't know if you know uh, the different policies that you know either candidate um, is offering. But how do you see healthcare and insurance for businesses moving into the next four years? Well, thankfully, there isn't too much, even though we hear a lot of talk of, you know, we're going to repeal this, we're going to repeal that. Well, it's kind of too late for that, you know. Um, I actually agree with that. It'll be impossible. That. Yeah, it's impossible for them to repeal this because the, there are too many people covered right now. That would just devastate a lot of, that would actually devastate the, the, the country. So, but I do, what I, what I, my my biggest belief is that over the next couple of years, maybe, you know, the next couple of elections, um, is that it, it'll become a single-payer system instead of being what it is now. Because right now, it is very confusing uh, just because, again, there isn't a lot of, a lot of um, you know, uh, education out there in regards to how it works when, you know, um, if it's supposed to be accessible to all, but then you still have millions upon millions of people who are not insured, that's an issue, you know. Um, and with, you know, you have to sign up to an open enrollment. Like, there's there's, there's just so many, you know, different um, intangibles and consequences to the way that it's, it's currently designed. I think it was a great idea, but it needs to be fleshed out a little bit more uh, so that we can truly capture, you know, um, 
you know, nationwide health care so that that way, because health care yeah. isn't something that, you know, nobody should, health care is a right, not a privilege. And, you know, that's one of the biggest things I know that uh, President President Obama was trying to convey, you know, with, <laughs> um, with ACA was, you know, making sure, you know, that everybody had access to affordable health care. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's the underlying purpose of that, which definitely, I, I can definitely agree with that. It, it's funny you should say that. Some people don't believe right. that health care is, is a right. Some people do think that it's Are a you right about that? Yeah, like Ben Carson actually uh, yep. made that statement. <laughs> health, well, no, no, not, not even joking. Like he said, uh, health care is right. a privilege, not a right. Um, but uh, right. J- just kind of um, <clears throat> in, in talking or in, you know, referencing uh, the whole in- insurance piece, uh, you you essentially said that uh, a single payer system may be the way to go. Um, my question on that uh, is that right now different healthcare policies don't translate from state to state. Uh, what what I heard is the reason why they're not doing that is because if that happens, then it becomes a federal um, issue, and then the government has to do right. more to regulate that. Is that true? And how does that affect like yeah. Payer? Yeah, yeah, because then it starts to look more like Medicare or Medicaid. Gotcha. Um, you know, where it's no longer, you know, controlled really even by the insurance companies anymore. Um, you know, so, and that's a whole other uh, conversation, you oh, know, okay. if it looks more like Canada <laughs> or somewhere else, you know, that's a whole other, yeah, oh, we have a whole, part, yeah. whole podcast for, <laughs> around that. Um, yeah, we might have to. We but um, to. Because uh, yeah. that is definitely um, something that we're looking at that, I agree with you. Like healthcare is definitely one of the most important um, things for, uh, we'll say a, well, not, not even an adult, but just an American, because that's you're gonna get hurt at some point. Like you know, it's it's one of those it's one of those right. realities that you're gonna need it. You are going to need mm-hmm. it no matter what, because you're gonna find yourself in a hospital at some point. Um, you are correct. So, so yeah, so. Uh, Kind of in in closing, um, is there any anything in addition you wanted to you tell uh, to tell our uh, our listeners about either Gap International LLC, kind of some of the things that you guys are looking at, or some things that you're doing, or I want to do in the next coming yeah. year. So, yeah, um, actually, what 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 we're doing now is um, is that we're trying to uh, work with um, uh, one of our projects that that we will hopefully will uh, gain some traction is. Um, been able to do some things for, you know, some of the councils uh, and uh, just getting the awareness out um, as it relates to uh, small business owners and how they can um, offer benefits to their employees, um, you know, without having to uh, to break the bank. Um, and that also includes, you know, the payroll component, the, you know, uh, their own individual insurance because we also can um, – uh, can broker uh, workers' compensation and things of that nature as well. So that's something that we're, you know, extremely uh, excited to do, and we'll actually be at the HMSDC conference down in Houston, um, and we'll be at the NMSDC conference. Uh, um, Chicago. Yeah. In late October, yes. Um, and we are able to uh, service clients throughout the 50 states, so um, and that includes Hawaii. And if you're in Hawaii, I will fly personally <laughs> out there to spend some time with you on the beach. Um, but I love so the dedication. We're uh, <laughs> yes, yes. You know, I'll I'll sacrifice that. You know, uh, <laughs> but um, but 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 uh, but uh, truthfully, um, and one of the things that we also do is if you're if you're a company that's currently offering benefits. Um, but you're doing it the old-fashioned way. There's a lot of paper and things of that nature. We can bring it to the 21st century uh, with some proprietary technology uh, that we're utilizing, um, you know, and help you know simplify those processes as well. As well, um, and our website is www.gabint.com, um, and our office number is 404-343-0177. Zero one seven seven. You can reach me personally at extension one zero two, or we have a phone direct. We any anyone in our company can can um, assist you with your needs. Um, and if you need to reach me by, by email, my email address is f b a r g a n i e r at g a b 
INT.com. That's perfect. I'll, I'll also have that information uh, below in the description. Uh, so if anybody's okay. interested, um, <clears throat> right. I can definitely connect with you. Well, um, okay, uh, Felipe, uh, once again, you know, I appreciate you taking the time uh, to talk with us here at Global Diversity News. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your company um, and how you guys are effectively helping uh, both small, medium, and large businesses uh, with their HR and retirement insurance. Uh, so yeah, once again, you know, thank you. Um, thank you listeners for taking time out your day as well to listen to the podcast and we'll be back next week with another one. So take care.